Hello and welcome to the web sessions. Uh, this is the second talk, delayed because I was ill. Sorry about that. Um, just so everyone's aware of what the point of these talks are, um, we are, as, as the web services team, we are presenting a series of, um, of short talks about topics um, that are relevant to the internet that we think are useful to every person, um, but may or may not come up in the course of daily browsing and the sort of thing that take a little bit, they're a little step beyond standard browsing, but we think are useful and interesting to people. Um, just so people know how, how this is going to work, um, we're filming it today um, as an experiment to see what happens when we put these things online. Um, we will be filming the entire session, including, including questions. If anyone has any problems with any questions they've asked or anything, appear, anything with them in it appearing on the web, then please let us know afterwards and um, we'll take you out again. Other than that, I'm going to talk for some time, 15 minutes or so, um, and then there will be a time for questions, um, and people can escape in the, mean, in the meantime if they feel the urge to. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, so just to, the other thing about the web sessions is we're not going to bore you with any technical details, or at least we're going to try not to bore you with any technical details, um, and there's going to be a bit of theory but mostly it's a practical, this is useful to you because type talk. Okay, so let's start. Is that the right mouse button? Yes, okay, so this is me. So I can introduce myself. This is my person finder entry. Uh, my name is Tom Natz. I am, um, well, I'm responsible for writing this application. Um, and that's not terribly informative, so that's a bit better. Um, I work for the web services team, as we're called now. Um, I've worked for the radio station, I like dogs, and I learn languages. Um, so that's where I'm coming from. I find, I find this sort of thing and communication quite interesting. Um, so, you don't want to hear about me. Why are we here? Um, basically, I want to talk to you about web syndication, which is a very grand term, um, meaning putting information on the internet in ways that are more useful in than just reading them when you browse to a website. So, what do I mean by that? Well, here's a, here's a typical website. You may recognize it as the University of Bath website. This contains several, pieces of several types of information, which if we open them up, um, immediate thoughts include events, um, dates, times, locations, and so on and so forth, um, information about people, um, you can look up any. You can look up any person in the university, and, it, and you can find their their internal telephone number, their email address, etc., etc. All sorts of information like that, and information and informational news inside the university or related to the university. What uh, what the university is up to at, at any given time. So, what we want, to, what I want to look at though, is how can we reuse this information in in practical ways in the real world. Uh, well, to start with events, uh, you can, when you when you find an event on the on the website, you can take that and put it into your paper into a diary, be it a paper diary or an electronic diary. Um, obviously, if you're using a paper diary, you have to write it in. Um, if you're using an electronic diary, though, it would be nice if the information could go from the website to your diary without actually having to type every piece of information from one place to another. Um, we can mark up information in such a way that you can synchronize it with your electronic diary, be it, be it an online one like something like Google Calendar or a PDA or your PDA or your phone or Oracle Calendar or whatever you choose. Same is true for people. Um, that information can be reused in any address book you can think of. Uh, electronically, that includes your email address books, your phone address, your phone address books, again, your PDAs, and so on. Any, any other instances you can think of. Um, the other one, uh, news. News is a little bit is a little bit different. We don't want to include news in the same way that we do the address of someone. Um, but there is, there are the information that that goes around the internet um, can get can quite easily get lost. And how we read that information is quite important. And that's particularly what I want to look at today. So to explain what I'm talking about, I'm going to use an analogy. Here is Johnny Web user. Every day, he gets in, he fires up his web browser and drives around Webtown. First thing he does is visit 
the BBC website to find out what happened, what's going on in the world, what his interest, um, if there's any anything changes in the world of politics, whatever. Um, the next, um, he works at the University of Bath, and he's friends with someone called Thomas Nat. Uh, so he looks at his photo string. Um, this is a this is the Flickr website to see if Tom's in, if, has uploaded any new uh, photographs for him to look at. The next next thing he does is he reads one of his reads one of the blogs to which he's interested. Um, this particular one being about uh, efficiency in the workplace, um, how to keep your desk tidy. That particular post is about um, and. A discussion on how these on how that's useful, and then because he works at the University of Bath, he moves on to look at the um, University of Bath web services web, um, blog to see if the web services team is doing anything new or exciting that might affect his life. Finally, he reads a web comic, and then he's ready for the day at work. Fine. Um, now that's okay because he's just visited five websites, and it's taken him maybe ten minutes to read his way through all that. And, uh, and, and, and it's all good. Though this, the problem is, this doesn't scale particularly well. If he, instead of visiting five websites, visits 20 websites, or 80 websites, or 500 websites, he is going to obviously going to take a lot longer to get through this. And he's simply not going to be able to find the time in a day to look at all this information which, in which he's interested. <coughs> because he's going to have to go to every single page to see if every single page has been updated, to see if there's anything he wants to read before getting on to the next page. And that's only if he's looking at it once a day. If he's got a site such as the BBC, for example, which is a continuous stream of news, if he, is, he, wants, to know, he, is, he wants to know... If he wants to keep on top of the news all the time, he may have to check it three, four, five times a day, to, or whatever. But if he's got hundreds of sites like this, it's going to take a lot of time in order, to, in order to sort this out. So, this doesn't, this doesn't work particularly well. Um, what would be nice is instead of him having to go to every single website, he could instead bring the, uh, bring the information to him at his browser in one place and say, give me everything that's new. Like that. Where am I? Um, now, what RSS and Atom feeds, which are news <coughs> feeds, allow you to do is produce exactly this, exactly this model of browsing. So instead of you having to chase the information all over the internet, um, instead the internet is chasing you all over the internet, and you get to read them at, you get to read them at your own pace. At your own pace. So in an ideal world, you've, if you once you subscribe to your 500 websites or 30 websites or however many, you. Uh, the, the, instead, the information scrolls past you on, in your browser like a continuous stream of news, and you, can stand, and you can stand there and fish out any news articles that look interesting to you and read them. But you're not missing anything. You're just choosing things not to read if, if they don't look interesting. And it's, it can save all manner of times. So that's the theory, which is interesting but useless to us. Um, because I've not yet told you anything about how any of this should work. So, in, the technology, like I've already mentioned, the technology involved in this is called, uh, are news feeds, and they are called RSS feeds or Atom feeds, usually. We don't... Um, in order to, to make this technology work for us, there are three things we need. We need to know the address of the feed itself, which is just like a web address, um, like in, for any other website. We need to have a feed reader of some description, and we need to find to know how to combine those two things to give us our results. So, stage one, we need to know how... Oh, yeah, let's do something practical. That's some a moment ago. So, stage one, we need to know how to spot news feeds in the wild. Um, we have... very Most websites, most uh, modern web browsers, um, certainly Internet Explorer 7 and beyond, and... Firefox and versions of Firefox will identify um, will identify news feeds that are marked up within the page itself and and let you and let you see them. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. A lot of pages also have um, also contain them in the body, so there'll just be a link that says to the um, that just says to the uh, just says click here to go to the uh, to go to the to go to the feed. So in Internet Explorer. 
Uh, this is, as you can see, Google and the university website. Um, Google doesn't have... If you look in this area here, there's a little square that with, a, with what looks to be a sonar symbol on it. Um, on a site which doesn't have feeds, such as the Google search engine, which you wouldn't expect to, um, it's, it's grayed out. On a site which does have a feed, as you can see, it's, uh, it appears in gold. And if you use Firefox, it's much the same, except it's in the address bar instead. Okay? Right. So, here we go. So, this, so as you can see, there's Google with no, with no feed. Oh, ooh, help. And in Internet Explorer, if you click on the little arrow, it gives you a list of all the, uni and the university sites. It gives you a list of all the feeds that are available. Um, if I click on official news, <coughs> it gives us the feed itself. Uh, it, Internet Explorer marks it up in this particular way, um, which makes it reasonably readable. But the bit we're interested in is, up here, the address of the feed, which has... Which, tell, which tells us exactly where it is. And the same thing, if we go to Firefox, the same thing is true, except it's up here. We click on it, and again, we get the list of... And again, we get the list, we get, we get the list of, th of feeds available, and we click on the one we want, and it, gives us, and it gives us the feed marked up slightly differently. Again, there's the, uh, there's the address. So that's, that's, that's stage one. We now have... We now have our feed. What do we want next? Um, but so what? Well, the next thing we need is a, is, a, is a feed reader. There are a variety of different feed readers. Here is, a, here is a small selection of them. We've got the imaginatively titled RSS Reader. There's uh, Google Reader, Feed Demon, Thunderbird, and Outlook, both of which are you'll probably have heard of as email programs. Um, but they also include... Um, RSS functionality. Um, Outlook only since version 2007, so I don't think that's out at the university yet. Um, there's also Ghost Reader, Snarf for Planet, and so on. They're, these all run on the win these all particularly run on the Windows platform and probably in other places as well. Um, but the one we're going to look at is Google Reader because it is free. It's on the web, so wherever you go, you can visit. You can visit it. Um, and because if you already have a, a, a Google email account, uh, it, you can log into it using the same, inf the same information, so you don't even have to sign up for anything new. So, another demo. Here we go. Hold on to your socks. Um, okay, so if I go to Google Reader, it's at reader.google.com, which is on a website, uh, which is all, all these links are on a page, which I'll... Put, I'll put the thing up at the end. Um, here, so the Google Reader looks like this the first time you the first time you log into it. Um, you've got a man there who'll talk about it. Um, you've got a way of adding subscription. Uh, you've got and you've got help in the main in the main body. Um, but you can look at that if you're interested. You can look at that in your own time. Um, instead, let's let's look at the sites that we looked at before. So here's the BBC News site. If I find the RSS feed for this, I'm going to do this in Firefox, but it shouldn't really make a difference. Come here. Which one you go, which, which, uh, which browser you use. So if I take that address from up here and copy it and take it over to Google Reader, add subscription, right click, paste, add. As you can see, immediately, today's BBC. Uh, today's BBC information appears in front of us. Um, you can change the way you can, in Google Reader. You can change the way it works. You can order it. You can change the ordering up here. And once, as you read them down, you can click on the individual items to take you to a to take you to the full news story on the site, or you can just scroll down, skim reading them. And as you see, as I do that, um, they're marked as red. And over on the left hand side, uh, where it says B, uh, where it says BBC News over here. Okay. It says it tells us how many we've got on how many of them we have unread. Now, if we take if we just quickly skip through the other ones as part that we mentioned earlier. Come here. 
Copy. Paste. Please work. Or don't work. Fine. Let's get another one. Okay, so now we have two. Uh, as you can see, we can down the bottom left, we can switch between the sites that we want to read the information from. Um, alternatively, we can go up to uh, I think on the, ho uh, the home link gives us a summary of what we haven't of what we haven't yet read. And if we go to the All Items tab, it gives us an amalgamation of all the feeds that we include in the page um, in one long in, in one long um, in one long stream. And they're organised by uh, by date that they've been that they've been published. Um, and we can read and you can read the newest onwards. So immediately you can so immediately we can see that we've got a lot of BBC information and not much not much else on this particular case. But um, but in theory, what we'll, what we'll have is uh, the, the most up-to-date news all the time in front of us. So any time we want to check our sites to see what's appeared, we can come straight to this page, uh, straight to the Google Reader page, and can, it will contain a whole list of, of, all the, of all the information we haven't yet read. Uh, I think that will do for that for the moment. If we go back to this, right. Okay, so... That's the practical. That's the practical how-to area of that. We can go. I can go easily go through more of that later if people want me to. Um, yeah. So what we've produced is uh, a one-stop shop with all the information on that we want to read on a daily basis, um, where we, we can go to and access and not have to spend a spend time going between different sites. Google Reader will automatically uh, communicate with the websites periodically. Um, and, give, and gather the new information in for you so you can look at it whenever you go to the site. Right. This bit will be short, I promise. We have... Um, if you're a webmaster and you run your website, why should you bother to do the other side of it? Why should you bother to include new streams into your site? It's... Well, there, there, are, several, there are several reasons. First of all, um, it, include, it ensures your content is getting seen. Uh, it... If if someone if you're expecting someone to browse between several sites all the time, it's very easy for them to miss your site on several, on a few days and then forget about it entirely. Once they've included your feed into a reader, they then have to actively delete it, um, which is less likely to happen. Your so your information will keep coming to someone's attention without them having to remember you exist. It does remove it, it removes a certain level of. Uh, of, of the old how how do I attract people to my website all the time syndrome um, again it makes if what you're doing is lowering the barrier between yourself and the and your audience and the lower the barrier is the less likely they are to get bored and leave also if you also the other the other thing about including feeds is that you don't if you include them in your um, is if you don't include them and someone is using a feed reader. Uh, and they're expecting to see them. If they've got, if all their brow, all their daily reading is done through a feed reader, and you're not there, then you're not going to get. They're unlikely to be able to get any purchase with them. They're not likely to come back to your site specifically. Um, these things, like I say, these things are becoming reasonably standard. So, it's a case in some way, in some ways, it's a case of keeping up more than more than going to a future site, rather, rather than pushing towards a future technology. Um, how do I do it? Very, very quickly, if you write websites from scratch and you know how to write PHP, Magpie is a very good library. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but if you don't understand any of that or don't want to understand any of that, and who would, um, you can, uh, don't worry, because help is at hand, because the web services team has released, the, has released OpenCMS, which contains a lot of, uh, which, contain, which contains some feed reading things. You can, it allows you to include feeds into your site and push information out. So, you can pull news into your. It can read news feeds and place them into your site, into your site for you to redisplay. And via the news system, it can also shout your information out to whoever is interested in hearing it. 
Uh, I should point out that that hasn't yet been rolled out, but I'm told it is due imminently. Um, and I think that's it for the moment. So, yeah, if we have any questions, then that's it. That a website, by the way, has got uh, links to Google Reader on it. It's got links to BBC. and It'll have anything else I think of to put on there. Um, that's on the wiki, which is also another shameless plug for the things that we've been doing. There we go. Thank you. Okay.